An Analysis of the Carl Gustav System by Cadet Kenneth Rao. The Carl Gustav is a multi-role, multi-function, reusable 84mm recoilless rifle designed by Saab as a force multiplier and combat support weapon system. The Carl Gustav uses a multitude of ammunitions to perform specified tasks, including high explosive anti-tank rounds, nicknamed heat rounds, that help penetrate protected and armored vehicles, anti-structure rounds that specialize in the destruction of buildings, firing smoke and illumination canisters to support ground unit movements, and anti-personnel rounds that are capable of point detonation and delayed impact, allowing the round to pierce a wall or bunker and explode on the inside. This system is regarded as successful as it has been used across the globe for approximately 70 years. Additionally, this system has been utilized by the United States Special Operations Command, which is a testament to its high versatility, durability, and effectiveness. This system is classified as a physical system, specifically non-living and man-made. It is comprised of several components, including a handle, sights, shoulder support, a backblast funnel, and a tube. This system is just over 3 feet long, round, green, just under 22 pounds, and the tube of this system is rifled, meaning there's a spiral down the center in order to spin the round as it exits the tube, increasing its accuracy. This is an open system as it interacts heavily with its surroundings. Temperature, precipitation, wind, humidity, and many other external factors all interact with the system and determine how it will perform. Additionally, the act of firing around from this system can be described mathematically using a series of equations, including the equations for force, gravity, and horizontal and vertical displacement. This system can be observed through a multitude of different perspectives. From a black box perspective, the basic function is that a round is in place in the system and it comes out effectively. Gray box, open the loading hatch, put a round in, close the loading hatch, disengage the safety, pull the trigger, and fire an effective round. From a white box perspective, there's not enough information present. The manufacturer keeps this information and specifications to themselves. In terms of spatial arrangements, this system is broken down into four levels, starting with the meta system. The Carl Gustav belongs to a family of recoilless rifles and combat support weapons. As a system, there are several models of the Carl Gustav, starting with the development of the M1 in 1948 and currently on model M4. The Carl Gustav is broken down into several subsystems, including sighting mechanisms, the loading hatch locking mechanism, and individual rounds of ammunition. These subsystems are broken down into elements, including a forward grip, a trigger, the barrel or tube, a carrying handle, and a back blast funnel. The Carl Gustav system has been upgraded three times since its introduction in 1948. Once in 1964, again in 1986, and finally in 2014 to produce its most recent model, the Carl Gustav M4. According to the developer, Saab Bofors Dynamics, the Carl Gustav M4 has five major improvements over its predecessors. These include compatibility with integrated sights, an adjustable shoulder rest for better ergonomics, reduced weight, faster reload, and integrated shot counter for improved logistics and maintenance. These five major innovations have come from the massive increase in available technology. Now we are able to mount intelligent sights such as range finders in order to maximize the effectiveness of the ammunition used. Additionally, better computer-aided design programs have allowed for several models to be digitally created and tested without ever having to construct a physical model or prototype. Finally, Producers have listened to the needs of the customer and integrated a shot counter to create an easy threshold for system retirement. The systemogram begins with ground soldiers who see an enemy and prepare to engage that enemy with the Carl Gustav. Upon opening the hinged loading hatch, the Carl Gustav is ready to be loaded. Soldiers will load one round, at which point the system will be loaded, and close the loading hatch for the system to be ready to fire. Soldiers will then disengage the safety and fire, resulting in one of two outcomes, either destroying the enemy or not destroying the enemy. If the enemy is not destroyed, soldiers will re-engage with the Carl Gustav. The system's boundary diagram depicts how this Carl Gustav system takes the inputs of ammunition and a target 
and transforms them into the outputs of an effective projectile fired and the target destroyed. It does this through the trigger activating a firing pin within the system, the firing pin detonating the primer of the ammunition, primer igniting a main charge, the projectile is then propelled by gases being expelled out the rear of the system, and the projectile is then spun by the rifling of the barrel. Additionally, internal feedback is witnessed through the round counter and trigger reset, and the external feedback is witnessed through soldier reviews and visual confirmation of target destruction. The need for this system arose when light infantry and dismounted forces needed a high-performing, accurate, reliable, reusable, recoilless rifle in order to effectively engage dynamic and diverse enemies. The risks at this stage in the system life cycle are cost, as it might not be advantageous for producers to develop, and technical, because it might not be possible to create a system that can incorporate all the needs of the consumer. The stakeholders for this stage in the system life cycle are producers and consumers. In order to develop a systems concept, the producers attempted to transition most, if not all, of the needs of the customer into a feasible model. The risks associated with this step in the system life cycle are cost and technical, and the stakeholders are soldiers, the developer, and investors. In order to design and develop this system, the manufacturer and creators began to transform the ideas and thoughts about how the system should operate into real life. They ran initial tests, checks, and simulations of prototypes to create the best system possible for the task at hand. For instance, designers evaluated the advantages of certain rifling ratios, metals to use, and what can be trimmed off the system to lighten it while keeping it accurate and effective. The risks associated with this stage of the system's life cycle are technical as fitting all the pieces together from the system may not fit and may not be feasible or possible, and programmatic as the alteration or removal of one component of the system could cripple the system and bring the entire manufacturing process to a halt or completely back to the drawing board. The stakeholder is Saab. During the production and deployment stages of the system life cycle, the producers began actual manufacturing and testing of the system as well as acquiring contracts for the system they have produced, at which point they then ensure that the system arrives to their destination. There's a technical risk associated with these stages of the system life cycle, as production may not produce the system as initially intended, as well as scheduling risk, as you may encounter shipping issues and unexpected delays throughout production. The stakeholders continue to be soldiers and sob as well as investors. Soldiers began using and operating the Carl Gustav system for its intended purpose as an effective combat support system. The risks associated with this are technical, as the system will become degraded and eventually not operate as initially intended, and programmatic, because if one small essential piece breaks, such as the sighting mechanism, the system may become useless. The stakeholders are soldiers and ground forces who are utilizing this system. In order to retire the system, the producer will create a new system in order to phase out the current system with a newer and more effective model. We see this through the progression from the M1 to the M4 model of the Carl Gustav. The risks associated with this are in scheduling, as it could take too long to phase out or phase in a new model, and cost, as it could be too costly to produce a new system. The stakeholders our soldiers and Saab. These are the sources I use to analyze the Carl Gustav system.